Hello, my earth angel friends, Reverend Elvia here, founder of angelsteach.com, and happy holidays to you. Welcome to the month of December 2012. So much is prophesied for what's going to happen later in this month, what's really already in motion right now. I know that many, many earth angels, light beings, are feeling um, a lot of stress right now. The energy can feel very, very chaotic. There's a lot of healing that's happening on a personal level and, of course, on a, a really a global level as well. So if you're feeling that pinch, know that you're not alone. And this is just the time where there's really no other choice than for us to uh, really communicate with our angels and our benevolent guides on the other side. So. This month's reading, I'm going to continue with the theme that I started last month with having you choose one of three objects and then do a reading for each of those three objects. And again, I love this process. If you watched the video from last month, just really, really love this process because it gets you using your intuition on your own because you have to choose something ahead of time. So your angels are already guiding you and this shows you that they're already guiding you in a very clear and often profound way. So, the three objects that we have this month are, who wants to go first? All right, I'm going to start with my beautiful Christmas ornament here. It's a sparkly gold tree made out of, I think it's paper mache. So this is uh, object number one. Object number two is this teeny tiny, and she just came forward to me. She's this teeny tiny little angel that you can see hopefully right there. She's a tree ornament. She was my grandmother's. And uh, angels have always been in my family, um, not consciously communicating until my generation. Uh, and yet I know, of course, they were communicating with my mother and my grandmother and all those before them for a long, long time. So anyways, object number two is this precious little angel tree ornament made out of wood, if that matters to you. And then object number three is a goddess menorah that actually belongs to a very dear friend of mine. And you'll see that the candle is lit and she is adorned with fresh holly, quite lovely. <clears throat> Let me see if I can give you a better look right there. Again, this is object number three. So again, choose one of those three objects, the tree, the little tiny angel, or the goddess menorah. And I'm going to pull a card first for the tree. We'll see what the angels have in store for us this month. I will say as I'm pulling the card that uh, been getting a very clear message that it's not just the angels, but really we need to be calling upon our uh, ascended masters, upon our benevolent uh, guides and deceased loved ones, and really pulling in and working with all of that energy as we move through this transition together. All right, so the card is, is being stubborn coming forward here. And as you may have heard me say in the past, it's always a message in and of itself. So for those of you who chose the Christmas tree, whatever it is the message is going to be, it's something that you have to be patient for. It's going to take some work. It's going to actually more take some time. And, interesting, the cards that came forward, they're stuck together. So yet another message. That's odd. Okay, so there are two cards that were stuck together, Infinity and Divine Will. And the card for the Christmas tree is the Infinity card. And it speaks to this chaos that we're experiencing right now. Uh, you'll notice that it looks as though there's, it, it, it's appearing to me that sphere on the lower right hand side is appearing to me like uh, the sun. And that the bursts of energy that are coming out from that are like solar storms, if you will. They're like, um, flares and it just is bursting with energy and yet you know it's it's calm within the sun itself there's really not a whole lot of bursting of the energy as there is coming out of it so as this relates to the christmas tree 
one of the tree decoration. If you don't celebrate Christmas, no matter, uh, don't, no worries, I should say. Um, it's really all about what's the message for you, regardless of what your personal beliefs are. So the messages are very, very um, clear, actually. It's about the gold less than the Christmas tree itself. You'll notice that this um, gold that's in the card is very similar to the gold in the Christmas tree. And it feels to me that the emphasis is on the gold and about um, mining what lies within you. In other words, going deep into who you are. And this is so, so profound as this is coming through because it's so much what these energies are all about is it's just squeezing the truth out of us, squeezing those nuggets of gold out of us because so many people are coming up against these walls, coming up against these obstacles and being forced to look at their alternatives, look at their options and choose from that place of raw truth. And, you know, the clear message I'm getting is that that's what this is all about. Is that you need to be realizing that, you know, you're, you're here, you're up against these obstacles because you have, because you do have options, even if it doesn't feel like you do, you do have options and it's really important for you to realize that those options are um, really divine and it's pushing you towards the gold. And the gold, you know, being a like really good thing, right? So the other thing I'm noticing as I'm doing this reading is, I don't know if you can see it, but on the tree itself is some glitter, some little sparklies, and I'll try to hold it up close there. And that's just a reminder that, you know, this gold that we're talking about glitters. And as you come up against those obstacles, uh, you know, you're really, you're burning off, going back to the solar flares here, you're burning off what you don't need, you're getting rid of it and you're really focusing on what you do need and the essence of all of that. Okay, so let's move on to the little teeny tiny angel here. And let's pull a card for her, for those of you who selected the little angel. Okay. I will, by the way, as I'm pulling a card here, and this card's coming quickly, so message here is that uh, whatever this is, I'm already hearing low-hanging low fruit, um, but I will be doing a Wheel of the Year spread video uh, for 2013 uh, towards the end of 2012, beginning of January. The card that's come forward for the little tiny angel is Inspiration, and it's um, very much an image of the Divine Feminine and the birthing of the Divine Feminine, and you'll notice, oh my goodness, there's a teeny tiny little um, goddess angel on her third eye. And uh, you'll see right here on, on the card image, it's this beautiful little teeny tiny angel. And it's, it's really about recognizing that your intuition is so much a part of who you are. And if you've selected the angel, the message for you is that you've forgotten your connection with your angels and, and ultimately with your intuition. And that instinct, however it plays out for you, we call it, I call it, the angelic intuition. It's all about how you sense your inner and your outer world and how you choose to respond to what you sense. And there's something that's happened for you, I'm hearing recently, um, recently meaning, and I'm hearing more specifically within the last five years for some of you, um, but not going back further than that. And for some of you, it was actually just within the last week. So depending upon who you are, see what feels right to you. But ultimately, in the span of a lifetime, it's recent. And, you know, something's happened and you've lost that connection, lost that faith, really, in your intuition and how you respond from that place. And so this is really a call to action I'm hearing to plug in to who you are, why you're here, and make a commitment to reconnecting with your angels, with your own angelic intuition, and doing whatever it takes to, um, to connect with that, because it's what's going to guide you through this enormous transition that we're all part of. And um, I am hearing, I, the, the angels are saying books, books, books. So for some of you, that may be um, finding a book that's going to help uh, 
really pull that out of you. There are lots of wonderful publications uh, out there in the world uh, from Hay House, um, from all kinds of sources. And you know, it's important for you to choose what's right for you. But for some of you, uh, I am hearing a book is a very important way to, um, to really ground you and pull you through this. I actually want to share a very quick story about books because I was in Barnes and Nobles the other day and, and this is just how life can unfold for you when you do connect with your angels because it really is just so perfect. You know, I was at Barnes and Nobles and I am guided over to this book stand and there in the bestsellers is Joel Olstein's new book, um, I Declare. And I love Joel Olstein. You know, he just He's so bright. He has so many um, pearls of wisdom to share. And I, I understand that, you know, certainly being as Christian as he is, for some it resonates, for some it doesn't. Um, I just, I love the essence of who he is and what he offers to the world. I think it's just precious. And, you know, I opened up the book as I was guided to the page that I was guided, and I read this paragraph that was just so profound, so perfect for me in that moment that I, I literally started crying right there in Barnes and Nobles. I mean, not like sobbing, like embarrassing kind of crying, but just, you know, tears weeping. And it was just so beautiful, and it was a perfect reminder of how we are all so connected with our angels all the time, and we just have to remember that. So if you chose the angel, you know, this is where you're at, and you need to just make, again, that commitment to reconnecting, because it's there. It's already there. Okay, so... Our goddess Menorah. I'll show you her, her one more time. She is just so beautiful. And uh, I'm not sure where my friend got her. But priceless. Okay. Let's see what card comes up for her. And again, another fairly easy pick. Also profound. Positive outcome. Interesting. Very much a goddess figure. You know, this card is very much about the goddess and about the return of the goddess and the centering of the goddess. And what I'm hearing for you, if you chose the goddess menorah, is that it's time for you to plug into uh, more of your spiritual discovery and discovery of the goddess that lies within you. And what I mean by that is looking at different forms of ritual, different forms of connecting with other women, gathering with other women, and doing healing work together. You know, it's, it's so important for women to gather together in ways that are sacred, in ways that really change who we are and actually define in many ways who we are. I just met with four of my, my close girlfriends last Sunday night, and we did a beautiful, beautiful healing ritual. And we had a, an altar with candles and you know uh, different things that we were looking to work on for our spiritual evolution. And it was just so profound, the shifts and the changes that happened for everybody sitting in that circle. And, you know, it just brings to mind the, the fact that, you know, if we work in isolation, then we're only as effective as we are on our own. If we work, on the other hand, in partnership with other women and gather in that community, then the effect is greater than the sum of the whole. So in other words, you know, we come together and the energy as a group becomes much bigger than you know, each of us individually added together because there's just this amplification thing that happens with that intention and we feed each other, we fuel each other and it's just a glorious, glorious thing. So if you have chosen this card, uh, not this card, pardon me, this menorah, Really, your call to action is to gather with another woman, with other women. It can be just a girlfriend. Uh, and this is more than just having a cup of coffee or going to a movie or going out to dinner. This is really about you know, getting together with them to uh, really 
create some kind of a healing. Again, the word in my head is ritual. And what I mean by that is it puts a certain formality around what it is that you uh, need to do with them. And it, it, it creates, it's about being very uh, deliberate with your intention and uh, creating sacred space to do the healing that you need to do. So I do understand that some of you are probably wondering, hmm, I don't know exactly what she means about this doing ritual thing. What exactly is that all about? And I'm, I'm hearing that there's more to come. I'm not exactly sure what my angels are meaning by that. But um, suffice to say that if you're not exactly sure what I mean by that, that somehow the angels will either bring it to you or I will be providing it at some point in the near future. So. Let me just tune in and see if there's anything else that our angels have to share with us this month. And I'm hearing we're all set, although I'm going to choose one more card for you to interpret. And just give you a chance to use your intuition, because that's what this is really all about. I love giving you messages, but ultimately I'm like your training wheels. I want you to be able to do this on your own. I'm hearing my dogs confirming that. Okay, the card that has come forward is Sacred Knowledge. So as you pay attention to the Sacred Knowledge card, what I invite you to do is notice what it is that you're hearing, either in your head or in your surroundings around you, what you're seeing immediately. So what part of this card is really jumping out at you? And then what you're feeling. How are you feeling when you look at this card? Does it make you a little anxious? Does it make you feel relaxed? Does it um, bring up some kind of uh, sense in your tummy or in your head? Uh, and then what do you just know about this card when you look at it? And take a moment and just jot all those things down and see if you can get a message that comes forward from that. There is a message on the back of this card. Again, we're using Tony Carmen Salerno's Spirit Oracle here. And this message is relevant for you, although I always want you tuning into your own senses here. Ancient and sacred knowledge is waiting within the heart of the earth, yearning to be discovered. Crystals hold the key. Connect energetically with the earth and her crystal realm. Healing, love, and abundance result. What a beautiful way to end our December reading. So with that, if you're new to Angels Teach, I invite you to check us out at angelsteach.com where you will find interesting and exciting class offerings and some free resources as well. And I look forward to working with you again very soon. Many blessings of abundance to you and happy holidays. Be well.